There we go. Well, welcome. Again, I'm so excited you're here. My name is Macy Lee, and I'm the manager of science and kinesiology for CURBS. And today we are going to talk about foam rolling. But before we get started, um, I'm going to give you a moment to go find a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball if you happen to have one handy. I'm going to give you a few seconds to go grab one of those because we are going to do a quick exercise together um, with some foam rolling exercises using a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball. So I'm going to go ahead, hang out here for just a moment while you guys go get one of those and then uh, come on back and we'll get started in just about one minute. Okay, well, everyone is coming back from getting their tennis ball or lacrosse ball. I love for these sessions to be interactive. Um, so I love to ask a lot of questions. You guys can either unmute or you can type them into the chat. But my first question for you is, have you ever heard of what, you know, what do you know about foam rolling? Have you heard of it? And what do you know about it? You can always go ahead again, unmute or put your answers into the chat. But I'd love to know what you know. And again, for those that are just hopping on, go grab a tennis ball or lacrosse ball and you can put into the chat or unmute, but I would love to see what you know about foam rolling and if you have ever tried it before. Today, we are gonna be discussing the benefits of foam rolling and why it hurts so good. Um, as we go through today's presentation, again, I love for these to be interactive. So if you have any questions, put them into the chat. Um, I love to answer questions for you. So one of the first things I have is over the past 20 years, foam rolling has kind of become the it thing in fitness. It's become one of the greatest trends in fitness. And the question is, why has it become so popular? And maybe why should you be doing it? Foam rolling is a form of self myofascial release. It's a, or SMR. It's a foam, uh, a form of a self-delivered deep tissue massage. The purpose of foam rolling or SMR is to locate knots and tight spots within your muscles and within your fascia. And those might be impeding your range of motion or your strength or your performance. Um, and so by releasing these knots and these tight spots, you can actually improve your performance, your strength and your range of motion. For those of you who have been on uh, webinars and information sessions with me before, you know that I am an anatomy nerd. I love learning more about the human body and I love to share what I learned. So here's one of the things that I find so fascinating. I'm sure as a child, we all heard that song, dry bones, right? The foot bones connected to the leg bone, the leg bones connected to the knee bone. Well, this is true, um, but it's true in so many different capacities. And one of the best ways is to explain it is through the kinetic chain. The kinetic chain, it describes how the body segments are connected together through different muscle groups, joints, tendons, ligaments, and fascia, which is one of the things we're gonna be discussing most today about fascia and how foam rolling improves that. Um, the kinetic chain works as an integrated functional unit. If one section in the kinetic chain is not functioning properly, it will impact performances in other areas um, because they're going to have to compensate. And this leads to overload. It leads to poor movement patterns and fatigue. So um, I always find this really interesting. This is a great image showing a lot of the different fascial lines that we're going to dive into. But what is fascia? You've heard me mention it a few times now. Fascia is a thin sheath, fibrous tissue, and it's literally like as thin as tissue paper that encloses muscles as well as organs. It's a mesh-like substance and kind of adds support to your muscles and organs. So kind of think of it as an internal ACE bandage that wraps around your body, but it wraps around in different directions to perform different things. 
It's primarily made of collagen and is broken into one of four different classifications. So there's superficial fascia, which is right beneath your skin. There's deep fascia, which surrounds muscles, visceral fascia, which goes around your organs. There's also several different fascial chains. And this is what this image is showing us is different fascial chains. So there's the superficial back line, which runs from the top of your head to your heels along your backside. There's the superficial front line. There's a lateral line. There's a spiral line that runs your left ear through to your right shoulder, back to your left hip, and then back down to your right heel. It just kind of wraps around the body. And then again, there's arm lines, there's deep front lines, there's superficial front lines. Um, this to me, again, is super crazy on how everything in the body is interconnected. It is super exciting. I want to think a little bit about that spiral line, right? Just for a moment, because it connects the left shoulder with the right glute, the right hip. If the fat is healthy and well hydrated, it'll move smoothly and it'll glide easy as you move. However, if you're dehydrated or if you have those knots in those tight spots within your fascia that can be caused by injury or different reasons, um, then it may become sticky and interfere with your movement. Now, understanding how fascia works and how it runs through your body is easy to understand how tightness in your right glute may actually be caused by something going on in your left shoulder. Um, again, because it's all interconnected. As I mentioned before, the purpose of foam rolling or SR is to find those tight spots and knots and release them because they're impeding your range of motion or your muscle performance. Releasing these will help you perform better. However, most people don't perform foam rolling correctly. The way research has really recommended for it to be beneficial. This involves identifying those tight spots and then applying pressure to change, to get those muscles to release. And that's one of the reasons why we say it hurts so good. Foam rolling is uncomfortable. It is not most people's favorite thing to do, but man, do you feel better after you do it. So by applying that pressure into those tight spots and not actually helping to release them and improve the circulation. So the correct way to foam roll is to start with your superficial muscles and fascia and gradually work deeper and deeper. And that's how you're going to get the biggest benefit. When done correctly, as I mentioned before, it'll have the same effect as a deep tissue massage, increasing circulation. It'll help um, realign supportive tissues in that area. But again, we want to do this by applying compression, by applying pressure to that area. So what are some of these benefits? Well, as you can see, there's a long list of them here on the screen. We've got decreased soreness and fatigue after a workout, improved muscle function and range of motion, improved flexibility, restored proper movement patterns, relieves joint stiffness, increased results from a massage. So if you do foam rolling in between when you go and get massages, you have longer lasting results from your massage. Your massage therapist will love you. Um, it insists in healing and recovery from injuries. Um, so again, this list goes on and on, but my biggest one is this bottom one, and that is foam rolling is like hitting the reboot button on our bodies. It's like taking us back to the factory settings. Now, as with every new exercise program, it is always best to consult your primary care provider first, especially if you have chronic pain or a major injury. With all of the benefits that foam rolling possesses, it's hard to believe there may be some reasons not to foam roll, but I do want to quickly go over them. One, if you have osteoporosis or even osteopenia, you may want to avoid foam rolling, particularly on the spine and on your hips, as it could cause a fracture. Again, because you're going to be applying a lot of pressure, we want to make sure that those bones are nice and strong. If you have diabetes, you want to avoid foam rolling anywhere that you may be experiencing neuropathy because your body, uh, the nerves aren't working properly. You're not going to necessarily feel if there is damage done to blood vessels, which can happen when applying a lot of pressure. High blood pressure, there is a caution with foam rolling because when done correctly, as I've said before, it can be uncomfortable. And when we're uncomfortable, we tend to hold our breath. And when we hold our breath, it causes our blood pressure to go up. So we want to make sure that if we do have blood pressure or high blood pressure, that we are making sure that we are breathing throughout and that we're monitoring our blood pressure. 
any area that you have varicose veins in should be avoided on foam rolling only because that could do more damage to that vein. And then lastly, if you're pregnant, you want to avoid foam rolling, particularly your hips in the third trimester, because your body produces a chemical called relaxant to get your hip muscles to relax to help with labor. And uh, we don't want to cause any more relaxation in that area and cause potential damage to the hips. And foam rolling your calf muscles and your lower feet can actually cause you to go into labor. So only from all those areas if you are ready to go into labor. Now, I've said it a few times before, but it's worth bringing up one more time. Foam rolling and other forms of self-myofascial release can cause discomfort when done correctly. It is very much like a deep tissue massage. So on a scale of one to 10, one being you feel nothing at all, and 10 being extreme pain, foam rolling is usually going to fall somewhere between a six and an eight. This is why we say it hurts so good. If you're doing it correctly, it will be uncomfortable in the moment, but you will feel good almost as soon as you're done. The important thing to note here is the difference between discomfort and pain. Feeling discomfort is uh, momentarily, it usually stops when you stop the activity. Pain is long lingering and pain is an indicator that there is something more going on and you should consult your primary care provider if you're experiencing any pain. Now, I asked you all to go get that tennis ball or lacrosse ball because we're going to do some exercises today. So I hope you are all ready. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a quick test to see how tight our muscles are. So I want everyone to stand up. You're going to stretch your arms up overhead and then hinge forward. And I want you to see how far you can reach. Can you touch your thighs, your knees, your shins, or get your hands on the floor? So let's go ahead and do this together. So I'm going to give you guys a few more seconds here, see how far you were able to reach. And then I want you to go ahead and slowly roll up and then put in the chat, where were you able to get your hands, your thighs, knees, shins, ankles, or to the floor? All right, we got one to the floor, fantastic. Ah, to the floor, fingertips to the floor, ankles. Wow, you guys are on fire. This is great. Now, we're gonna go ahead, sit back in a chair, and I want you to take that ball, and we're gonna put it underneath the, just behind our toes, not quite the ball of our foot, kind of between the toes and ball of our foot. And we're gonna start by rolling the superficial muscles. So we're going to roll at about one centimeter per second. So it's very slow. You're going to roll from your toes. If this was my toes toward my heel, and I'm going to roll really slowly. When I find a tight spot, I'm just going to apply a little pressure, kind of sink into that tight spot, hold it there for a moment, and then continue to roll. So we're going to do this together first. We're going to start on the right side, and then we'll repeat this on the left. So get your tennis ball ready. Here we go with the right side. Oops, my slides are not wanting to work today. Pardon me. Let's see how I can go back here. Sorry, don't have my normal technology up today. A little frustrating. So pardon me while I have to backtrack here for a second. Okay, let's try this together again. Sorry about that. So again, we're just rolling really slowly from the toe toward the middle of the foot into the heel, but you're pausing and applying pressure on any tight spots you may be feeling. Okay. Now let's try that left side. We're going to put that flare underneath our left foot, just by the toes, just behind the toes, and we're going to slowly roll towards the heel.
Again, stopping to apply pressure on any of those tight spots that you may be feeling, breathing while you're doing this and applying that pressure. Great job. Now I'm gonna have all of you stand up again and we're gonna repeat that stretch, okay? We're gonna reach up overhead, hinge forward, and I wanna see if there's any difference on how your body feels and where you can get your hands. So let's do that together. Before we roll, let's do a little test. I want you to hinge forward at the hips, lowering your hands to the ground. Oh, keep going. Your shins, ankles, top six feet. Get your hands flat on the floor. Notate how far you were able to reach because we'll repeat this test at the end of this class. Okay, take a deep breath and slowly roll back up. And then when you come back to your screen, let me know how far you were able to roll if there was a difference or if you just happen to feel any different. All right, so Kimberly was able to go a little bit further. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. Before we roll, oh. let's do a little test. I want oh, it's just gonna play all the way through. Okay. I apologize for this. Again, I apologize. I am so sorry, everyone. My computer has just wanted to uh, not participate tonight. So that being said, I'm so glad to see that some of you have had improvements. This is why I always say foam rolling is so important and so magical because it does so many great things for our bodies. Um, I highly encourage you to continue practicing foam rolling um, because if you were able to see just a slightest bit of improvement with just a few seconds of a roll, um, imagine what it would be like uh, if you were to do all of your lower body, your, you know, your hips, your glutes, your quadriceps, your hamstrings, and what a difference that would make. Um, so Curves does have a foam roller. We have partnered with a company called Rolga. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about this foam roller. First of all, it is made in the Uni United States. It is small and compact, it's, so it's not very big. It's only 11 ounces, but it's very durable. It can hold over 2,000 pounds. And my favorite thing about this foam roller, and this is why out of all of the foam rollers I have, this is the one I go to, is the fact that it's got those contours to it. So I can really align my muscles to target those knots and tight spots without foam rolling over my bones, without hitting my hip bone, without hitting my vertebrae and my spine. So I love this foam roller. And for those of you that are members in a club, talk to your local curves coach about one of the, getting one of these foam rollers. And if you're a member of my curves on demand, you simply go to the shopping icon and you can order yours there. The other thing I wanted to let you know is that if you have loved just learning that little bit about foam rolling and that one exercise we did, we have four foam rolling classes on My Curves On Demand that will, again, target your upper body, your lower body. We've got ones to target your um, anterior front, your posterior, your glutes, your hips. Um, and again, these are short classes, but they make a big, big difference. So last thing I just wanted to say is thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have walked away learning a little bit something about foam rolling and about the body and how it all comes together. And I'd love to answer any questions you may have. You can unmute or put them in the chat. Well, thank you all so much for being here. I hope you join us uh, next week as we have another fun information topic. So look forward to seeing you all next week. Have a good one.